Welcome you to the largest, fastest, and arguably most thrilling stock car facility in the world, Talladega Super Speedway. Known for its high banks and high speeds, today it plays host to NASCAR's Bush Grand National Series. Many of the names you'll hear may be familiar as drivers like Marlon, Martin, Earnhardt, Nemechek, and others thunder their 3,300-pound steel body stock cars inches apart at speeds approaching 190 miles per hour. That's excitement, and that's why the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing celebrates its 50th anniversary as the fastest growing motorsport series in the world. Two-time Grand National Champion Randy LaJoy dares to do double duty this weekend. Tomorrow he will wield the 50 car for Team Hendry. But today his eyes are fixed on speeding toward a third Bush Series title. 1998 has been the year of the youngster. 26-year-old Wisconsin native Matt Kenseth, already the apple of some owner's eyes, plans to prove his super speedway prowess today. But it's the name Earnhardt that has once again captured everyone's attention. No, not the seven-time Western Cup champ, but his 23-year-old son, Dale Jr., who, like his father and grandfather, turns heads and laps so fast he finds himself atop the standings. We at ABC Sports continue our 50th anniversary salute to NASCAR with today's coverage of the Bush Grand National Series Touchstone Energy 300 from Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. After eight events on the 31 race schedule, rookie Dale Earnhardt Jr. finds himself atop the series standings with a scant 31 point edge over another youngster, Matt Kenseth, with seasoned veterans Elliot Sadler, Mike McLaughlin, and reigning series champion Randy LaJoy rounding out the top five. 48 cars attempted to qualify, but from the first lap of practice, there was never any question as to who would lead the field from the pole. With more, here's Jack Aroot. Jerry, they call him Front Row Joe because of his penchant for qualifying his cars on the front row. Now, Joe Nemechek is already a winner in the Bush Grand National Trail this year, winning at the Super Speedway in Daytona. But thus far, this will be his third consecutive Talladega start from the front row, but he's yet to convert it to a trip to victory lane. In 1988, Magic Shoes Mike McLaughlin out of Waterloo, New York, won NASCAR's National Modified Driving title. He took that under his arm and went Bush Grand National Racing. McLaughlin has already qualified on a pole at Daytona. He's also already won on a familiar half mile in Nashville. Buckshot Jones got his nickname from his granddad when he was a youngster. His grandfather said, you've got a head just as tough as Buckshot. And Jones has taken that toughness Bush Grand National Racing. He's a former winner back in Milwaukee, Wisconsin two years ago. The number he carries on his car, appropriately, double on. Normally, when you take the family car out on a Friday, on a Friday or a Saturday, it's to go on a hot date or to a movie. For young Dale Earnhardt, as the command to fire engines begins, it means that he's going to take a trip around a speedway at speeds close to 200 miles an hour. Earnhardt makes his 18th career start today, but he's already won. That coming in his 760th start at Texas. Now, one of these four guys have in common, they've enjoyed the adulation and the attention of qualifying up front. For them, this week at Talladega has been a dream. For others, Bill Weber, it's been a nightmare. Absolutely, Jack. The green flag hasn't fallen here yet, but this race has already begun. In fact, it started on Thursday, and this bunch is already behind. It's been a season of no joy for Randy Lovejoy. No wins, no seconds, no third, no pole, no lap split. But he's fifth at point and was fifth at Daytona. Right now, he's 23rd. Jeff Purvis was third here Thursday afternoon, but tied for last Friday morning after his stock failed post qualifying inspection. Full start, 26. Elliott Sadler's speed would put him 17th in the field, but it came a day late because he exploded a rear end here Thursday on his warm up lap and never posted a time. It cost him 10 precious starting positions. Mark Martin is the all-time leader in Bush victories. He was just flat slow Thursday, and today rolls off way back in 34th. You can win from back here, but the deepest any previous winner has ever started in this race is 23rd. Mark did it last year. LaJoy, Purvis, Sadler, Martin, four talented drivers capable of getting to the front. It's not where you start in racing, it's where you finish. Nowhere is that truer than Talladega, where the challenge is not only getting to the front, it's staying there. Now for more on today's race, to the booth with Dr. Jerry Punch, Betty Parsons, and Kyle Petty.
Hello, everyone. So glad to have you with us. I'm Jerry Punch, along with our two expert analysts, Benny Parsons and Kyle Petty. And gentlemen, this racetrack, so massive with wide sweeping turns. I've been told by drivers that it may be the easiest track to drive, yet one of the most treacherous to race on. What are they referring to? Because they're racing, there's no way to get away from another car. They're racing at 190 miles per hour and just that far apart. Nose to tail and side by side. Kyle, you really have to depend on your fellow driver at Talladega. Yeah, you do. Physically, it's the easiest place in the world. Turn left, stand on the gas, you do it all day long until you make a pit stop. Robert Mentally, it's very taxing, very demanding. You're running, like you say, an inch, inch and a half off somebody's bumper at 185, 190 miles an hour, and chances are that guy in front of you has zero experience. You're going off into a hole behind somebody that's never been there before. So let me tell you, there's a lot of trust that's going to go on out there today. Experience is the key ingredient. That's why the list of past winners here reads like a who's who in stock car racing history. Dale Earnhardt Sr., Ernie Irvin, Jenny Schrader, and Mark Martin. As the field of 43 rolls off before we get underway, let's check in back in our wide world of sports studio in New York with host Robin Roberts. Welcome back to Talladega Super Speedway in Talladega, Alabama, the ninth annual Touchstone Energy 300. Our race analysis, it is 300 miles long, 113 laps, the field separation just 5.3 miles an hour. The pit window, that's important, 50 to 55 laps, but you can go 56 to 57 laps, that's halfway. You maybe can make it on one stop. Our track description is the largest in all of NASCAR, 2.66 miles around this trioval. The front stretch, 4,300 feet long, the back straightaway, 4,000 feet. That is a straight shot. The corner's banked at four stories high, 33 degrees. The trial will 18 degrees. The backstretch almost flat at just two degrees. Our Suzuki starting grid shows you that front row Joe. Joe Nemechek for the third consecutive year is on the pole flanked by the man they call Magic Shoot, Mike McLaughlin, a former modified champion. Back in row two, a couple of youngsters. Dale Earnhardt Jr., he is the point leader, not a rookie, but only run about a dozen races or so in this series at 23 years of age. Back in row three, Hermie Sadler turned 29 years of age yesterday, making it an omen for the former rookie of the year to get his first win in 1998. Some impressive drivers, a lot of young guys starting up front, including Dave Blaney and the former two-time series champion Larry Pearson, Kyle Petty and Benny Parsons. A lot of youth in this series, and a lot of guys started toward the front with very minimal experience here. We just saw Tony Stewart, the IRL champion, here in the NASCAR Bush Series race. David Green taking a day off from practice over in Winston Cup. He's going to run the Bush race. Almost ready to go down the backstretch, as Jerry said. 4,000 feet. When you come off turn two and look towards turn three, Kyle, it looks like it's about six inches wide. It's about six inches wide, and it gets to be about three inches wide when you get there. You feel like, it's like you take people around this racetrack that have never been there, and they say, how do you guys run at that wall down there? It looks like there is no turn there. And all of a sudden, you get there, and you're on the bank, and you're coming back down the front stretch. And right now, we're seeing these cars at 60, 70 miles per hour. We'll be seeing them at 190 miles per hour. And trust me, folks, we'll see them four abreast before the day is over. The car you saw a moment ago, Jeff Purvis, starts back in the middle of the field. He was the second fastest car in qualifying in first day, but was disallowed because of a rules infraction. He starts back in the middle of the pack. Look for him to make a run early toward the front. And Kevin Swans missed a driver's meeting. He will have to start at the very end of the field today. Jason Keller, Dale, back there. Dale Fishline, sometimes crew chief, sometimes Bush Series driver. And you saw Mark Martin, last year's winner of this race, starting back in 34th position. He won this race a year ago from back in 23rd, but he has got a long way to go and just 300 miles to get there. And some guys have a long way to go home. I told you there were 48 cars here to qualify. Here are the guys, or girls, who missed the field. Patty Maurice did not qualify. Doug Reed, Rick Wilson, Mark Day, and veteran Robert Presley. Cars are getting ready for the green flag. We'll be riding along with five different drivers today. Five different onboard cameras, including our pole sitter, Joe Nemechek, as they come down for Carl Simmons to wave the green flag to start the Touchstone Energy 300. Plate here, Benny Parsons, and it takes about a lap and a half, maybe even two, to even come near the top speed. Really, truly, folks, it takes five miles to get these cars up to full song. 
Shaw trying to figure out where is the best place for me to go. There they are. Did take a lot to get four abreast. A Sterling Marlin in one car diving to the inside. Up front, they are side by side. Nemechek and McLaughlin, just like they qualified. Nemechek will try to lead the first lap. He has the Pontiac of double O buckshot right behind him. McLaughlin sort of in the cat first seat in the middle as they go three wide and turn. And Sadler dove down to the inside, picked the spots away. There they are, three abreast coming off the corner. And Kyle, that's when you have to depend on that guy on the inside not to come up. You've got to depend on the guy in front of you, or on the outside of you, not to come up, and vice versa. Everybody's counting on the guy next to him, and you can't, you know, at 190 miles an hour, you don't just look left and look right. You've got to feel it, and that's where the inexperience seems to get some of these guys in trouble sometimes. They don't have a feel for where the cars are all around them. The car number two making a move early. That is the two-time national champion, Larry Pearson, the son, of course, the veteran David Pearson. He qualified back in eighth position in the New Holland Chevrolet. His first ever ride driving for Ricky Craven, and he's already gained four spots in two laps. Man, oh, folks, how would you like to be in the middle of this? I would not like to. Kyle, how do you do that? I would not like to be in the middle of that. You don't want to be in the middle. It's okay to be on the outside, and it's okay, okay to be on the inside. But the middle, you really don't know. And the, and the thing is, you're, you're trying to fill the cars to your left and to your right and trying to look in the mirror and look ahead all at the same time. And believe me, God didn't put enough eyes in race car drivers' heads to be able to do all this stuff at one time. Riding along with Jeff Purvis in the Lance Chevrolet. He's the guy I told you that started 26. He hasn't been able to move up because of the comments you heard Kyle and Benny making about traffic. Two and three wide. You can see him give a little hand signal there. A lot of times when traffic's this tight, you just throw your hand up so the guy stays off your bumper just a few inches. All you need is a foot, a foot and a half to be into that comfort zone. The black girl on the inside, the 17, Matt Kelly, is not up the inside, takes a spot away. And we're right along with Matt Kenseth, as a matter of fact, off turn two. That's one of the impressive youngsters we talked about, the youth movement in NASCAR Bush Series racing, second in the point standings. Already a winner this year at Rockingham, North Carolina. The last lap was 188 mile per hour average. Joe Bessie, Kevin LePage. Kevin LePage, the blue and red car on the outside. Joe Bessie, the dark car on the inside. One car that started up front but has moved its way to the back very early on must have a problem. That is Dave Blaney. What is it, Jackaroo? Jerry, actually, it's the problem that you talked about, getting the car wound up. It does take about five miles to bring these cars, as you say, to full song. For Dave Blaney, it's taken about six to, to eight miles. The team says there's nothing wrong with the car. Blaney just was a little slow coming up to speed. Well, there are 13 drivers who have never been to Talladega, and that's one of them. He's a great race car driver, former World of Outlaws national champion, but inexperienced in getting the car up to speed cost him some valuable spots on the racetrack. In the early laps at Talladega Super Speedway, our pole sitter Joe Nemechek, front row Joe, leads the way. Four laps are complete. Situated right in the middle of the Talladega National Forest. Joe Nemechek, the leader, is the fields in the trial. Oh, and Trouble! 89 car. Stan Barrett gets tagged, goes across the racetrack. Elliot Sadler's involved. David Green, Andy Santer, the yellow cars involved. Heavy damage to these cars. Heavy, heavy damage. First caution flag of the day coming out here on lap number six. If we can show you what happened. Ever see the Staten Barrett car, the white car goes down, tags the 66 of Sadler. Now he's going back across the racetrack right in front of David Green. Goes up, hits the outside retaining wall. Now Green's going to come off the racetrack. Another car is trying to make the evasive moves. Oh, he drives right in the side of the yellow car of Santer. Wow. Once again, caution on lap number six. Those cars involved, we see it a little bit different angle. Never see the cars, never see Stanton Barrett. Stanton Barrett comes up and gets tagged 
by Lyndon Amick, I believe. And Stanton tried to come up into a hole that wasn't there. And that's just not being able to feel where the cars are sometimes. Then you can see the cars go up the racetrack, down the racetrack, back up the racetrack again. A few drivers did an incredible job. Santera did an incredible job. Just got caught from the backside by a car coming back down the racetrack and hitting him in the quarter panel. And we can see all the damage to the 66 car. Jack Arood is standing by with one of the drivers involved in this melee. Jack? David Green, sometimes you just can't stay out of a wreck. Describe what the feeling was when you looked at the windshield and it was filled with cars. Well, first thing, our craft car was pretty good. I knew starting on the inside was not a good place to be and uh, couldn't get up. And um, as you know, the outside lane's place to be. You know, I had a deal with Elliot and uh, Randy LaJoy. We all stuck together and the, out the inside lane couldn't get nowhere. And uh, boy, everybody kept coming on the outside. Somebody turned 89 and he come across the track and got Elliot. And when Elliot's out of control, he ain't nowhere to go. And I found him. So uh, pretty hard hit. But, you know, I want to thank Kraft people and all those folks. Uh, we had a great car. and But, you know, you got to make it through the first five or ten laps. And here at Talladega, just got to use that old head. And today it didn't happen. Sometimes it's a survival game. He didn't survive today. Let's go to Bill Weber. Well, when Elliot Sadler failed to qualify in first round, your biggest concern was getting through the early wreck, and you didn't make it. What happened? Uh, I don't know. The 89 was beside me, and he tried to go up a groove, and somebody was there, and it turned him sideways and right into us. And I saw it happening. I tried to pull down, but just couldn't do it enough. And when you qualify back there with people with inexperience on these speedways, you know, this stuff's going to happen. And it did it to us at Daytona, and it did it to us again here at Talladega. These speedway tracks are going to kill us. It's just... May have a Phillips 66 in this points race we're trying to do and hopefully fix it and try to get back here and make as many laps we can. Okay, Elliot Sadler will go and try and fix the car and get back out for points, but very disappointed. You can swim from the back, but you have to get through the early cautions. He did not make it. All right, the cleanup continues on the front straightaway, the 92 car. That is the car of David Green. There's the Elliot Sadler machine or what's left of his Chevrolet. So we'll show you again what happened here on lap number six. How we talked about just inexperienced Stanton Dick couldn't feel that car. Look that hood up in the air. Look how this is a back glass or a windshield over here. I mean, there's pieces that just go everywhere, you know, and it's hard to, there, there's nothing you can control here, but this is inexperienced. He doesn't feel the 35 car. He cuts up on Linden. It just a little bit of a tack comes down and collects Elliot Sadler. Elliot Sadler's got no way to see how he goes back up the racetrack and just begins to just pick up cars. I mean, it's just, it's an amazing job that these other drivers do. Stantera cruising along, trying to avoid it, comes back across and gets hit in the side. It's just one of those deals. There's no place to go. It's every man for himself. All right, let's show you the cars that were involved in this uh, six-lap melee. Elliot Sadler, David Green, Andy Santer, Jason Jarrett, the former Grand Prix Motorcycle World Champion Kevin Swantz, and Stanton Barrett. Those six cars heavily involved and heavily damaged. Back with more coverage from Talladega Super Speedway in a moment. Talladega, Alabama, continuing our 50th anniversary celebration of NASCAR. Now, next Saturday, we got horsepower of a different kind coming your way. The Kentucky Derby, the Visa Triple Crown Challenge, the 124th running of the Kentucky Derby. Three-year-olds stack up to run for the roses at Churchill Downs. That is next Saturday live on ABC Sports at 4.30 Eastern Time. Under caution here, lap number six, and why the caution? We'll show you. This happened just moments ago. See the 89 car, Stan Barrett gets tagged by Linda Naming across the racetrack in front of the 66 of Elliott Sadler. Kevin Swan's involved in 88, 92 car gets tagged. That's David Green by Andy Santer in 47. Jason Jarrett also involved. Let's go down to Bill Weber, standing by with one of the drivers involved. And Jason Jarrett has some wild memories of his first visit to Talladega. Could you see anything? Not at all. Uh, when you're back there that far in a 40-car draft, uh, you know, it, I was on the brakes as hard as I could get. The spotter told me uh, where I needed to go, and uh, I just, you know, you're slowing down as hard as you can, and, and you just can't miss it. You're going so fast, and uh, it's unfortunate it has to happen that early in the race. Uh, you know, I can understand for the win or something like that, but uh, that early in the race, I was just trying to bide my time and get some drafting experience for my first time here, and... Uh, uh, get some exposure for Mac Tools, Fleetwood RVs, and uh, Coca-Cola, but uh, it just didn't work out today. Okay, his is a little short. We're back to green. All right, front row Joe picking up where he left off when he waved the green flag. He has led every single lap of this race thus far. Nima check the leader. The double O of Buckshot Jones. Then Dale Earnhardt Jr. back in third spot. Tony Stewart 
His back and forth spot as he tries to close in on Dale Earnhardt in the three. Joe Nemechek probably leading this group about as fast as they want to go. is Chevrolet Pontiac, Chevrolet Pontiac, and then about a six-car length separation back to Dick Trickleman, another Chevrolet. He is the fifth-place car. Dennis Spencer comes up to the sixth spot, and folks, that's him right behind Dick Trickle. Spencer started in 25th, is now running in sixth spot. Remarkable. He had gained most of those positions in the first six laps prior to that caution flag you saw. There's a look at Dick Trickle's move toward the front. Driving the Snyder National Chevrolet for Dennis Shoemaker. Back up front, Joe Nemechek holding off a group of cars. Now eight of them in the draft up front. We'll check in with Jack Aroon in the pits. Well, Jack Jerry, Dave Blaney's problems continue. It is a misfire on the car. The car is running flat. They've been in and out of pit road several times, checking spark plug wires. They had the same problem yesterday in practice when they changed the carburetor. Speaking of carburetors, Kevin LePage had a problem when he tried to restart his car. The linkage to the, from the gas pedal to the front of the carburetor, it actually snapped. It bolt backed off. They've been on pit road now for several laps, trying to make the change, put a lock nut on it, and send the page back on his way. Scramble back in the, in the pack as cars go too wide. They have been somewhat settled down. Mark Green, the car number 37, leading this group. Matt Hutter, the yellow car down on the inside. The rookie here in the NASCAR Bush Series race. Mike Dillon, the draw gasket car, tries to work his way to the front. That's Ed Barrier in car number 77, our most recent winner in Bush competition at Hickory Speedway, getting his first Bush win and his 208th career start. And they spread it out up front. Nima checks the leader, but they're deciding spots back to the pack. Ever sees trickle down on the inside, trying to work his way to Earnhardt, and Jimmy Spencer is trying to follow. And Trickle blows by the double zero. A buck shot. And here comes Spencer. Trickle is up to second spot. Nick Trickle in the car number 64. And you're looking back at the car number 12 of Jimmy Spencer. Just a few feet apart at 190 miles an hour. And now Dick Trickle's car number 64 looks beneath Lehman Jack for the lead. starts 16th, takes the lead, and here comes Spencer, started back at 25th. Talladega is qualifying is way overrated. That's the best part about Talladega, is all you've got to do is be in the field to be able to run up front. We've seen how Jimmy Spencer's come from the back of the pack to run second right now, and he's actually pushed Dick Trickle to the lead. Trickle was just there. Jimmy's fast enough that he can push him along. Inside line's a fast line, outside line's a fast line. While all this was happening, they had broken away from the next pack with Ron Barfield in the two cards. Some of those guys, these guys are right up there running fifth or sixth right now. That's how quick the second pack can catch up. So the draft's critical at a place like this. Boy, indeed, you saw Joe Nemechek hung out the dry on the high line, and they're still trying to go by. And look at the vibrations in these cars. I mean, I, I can't believe just how, what a rough ride it is. Some of the drivers were telling me down there that they're going to use mouthpieces. They're going to put plastic in their mouth so they don't chip their teeth. It's so rough in that car. Let's check in with Jack. Well, Jerry, as Benny Parsons said, they're not only looking at putting mouthpieces, Joe Nemechek is using a mouthpiece today. He said the rattling and the shaking, the vibration, not only gets to your kidneys, but as they say in the old way, it'll shake your teeth out. As you ride along with Joe Nemechek, you know that this is not for the physically faint of heart. Around Talladega for 300 miles, it can knock a few molars out. He's got the mouthpiece, though, today. The, the reason these cars are riding so much rougher than what they used to is... The oh! Sadler is involved, the 93 of Dave Blaney is involved. 
Go high, go high, go high, go high. There's no one spinning down the bottom. One got the yellow. Airborne against the catch high fence. High and they're that still looking down in the corner. Stay in line, Joe. 77 cars involved, the 96. Dale Earnhardt Jr. also involved, has some damage. So here on lap number 23, and Dave Blaney climbs out of his car, and be careful, Dave. Let's see if we can see what happened as there was contact right in the trioval. And there we see Dave Blaney gets hit and flam, he turns over and hits the wall with the roof of the car it looked like. I think what they did, they ran up on Blaney. It looked like they ran up on Blaney and somebody checked up and Earnhardt Jr. got in the back of you got to see it Hermie right here. Sadler's car yeah. number 29 there. If you see Hermie Sadler, the 29 car, here's Blaney to the inside. They're just about, the yellow car's right here, just about getting to even with him. And as you can see right here, as, as he goes by, the three car turns Hermie Sadler, which turns Hermie Sadler into the 93, sends him back across the racetrack. It's just you're so close, such close quarters, that as they race right there, somebody checks up just a little bit to give somebody a little bit of room. There's no place to go. That's it right. The slow car... Let's take a look from our onboard camera with Jeff Purvis. You know, Jeff Purvis never knew that was coming. He was still wide open on the throttle when he got hit. He thought he was past the wreck at that point in time. Matt Kendall. Great job right there. He did a terrific job getting through that crash. There's a different angle looking back up toward the trioval from the inside of the racetrack. Wow, that's Blaney's car on its roof right against the catch fence and did its job and shoved him back onto the racetrack as we check in that on the pits with Jack Aru. Jerry, you would think if you were on your roof and you were on fire like Dave Blaney was that you might have other things to think about than having the wherewithal to radio to your crew. But that's what Dave Blaney did. You know what he radioed? He said, I'm on fire. I'm pulling the onboard fire extinguisher. That thoroughly amazes me that while all hell is breaking loose, Blaney had the wherewithal to put the fire out. Well, once again, here are some of the cars involved. Brad Loney's car number 96, the 77 car of Ed Barrier. The car number four of Purvis, the points leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. involved, Hermie Sadler's car number 29, the 37 of Mark Green. Those cars involved here on lap number 23, a second melee in the trioval. Heavy impact, high speed on the high banks means high risk, and we've got it here in the early laps at Talladega. 24 on complete. But the action started early today, back on lap 23, this caution flag involving seven cars. That was Dave Blaney we saw on the outside retaining wall hard. That's Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the three car sliding down with damage to the right front. Here's another shot. There's Blaney, bam, in that outside wall. As he goes down and blocks the racetrack, just no place for some of these guys to go. Here are the cars involved in the crash, seven of them, Green, Loney, Barrier, Dave Blaney, Jeff Purvis, Hermie Sadler, and the point leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. So four of the top ten cars coming into this event, and the points are already in the garage being worked on as we check in with Jack Aru. Well, Jerry, only four cars have not made pit stops, and it's fairly evident that they're going to try and make it a one-stop race. The magic number for those four cars will be lap 58. All four say that if they can make it there, they can make this a one-stop event. Restart, lap 32, third caution of the day, lasted eight laps as Dick Trickle leads him down to turn one. The four car involved in the accident, that's Jeff Purvis and Lance Carr. He's a couple of laps down. As the field comes up to speed down the back, we told you the points leader is in the garage area standing by with Bill Weber. A conversation we didn't want to have to have. What happened from your point of view, Dale? Uh, well, we come up on a lap car there through the trial and a couple cars. I seen the car, uh, two cars in front of me, kind of bobbled around. Everybody had to check up. You get 
run off that corner and get sucked up nose and tail. There ain't much room to be checking up. So it's bad for Ace Delco with Chevrolet. We ain't gonna have the points lead leave, leaving this racetrack, but um, I know uh, we'll, we'll get it back. That's Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's headed back to the garage. And what they want to do is try and get out and get at least one more lap so we can possibly pass those cars that also fell out in the same wreck he did and pick up those points. Well, it sounds like his father, Dale Sr., looks frustrated like he would be if he were out of a race early on. They scramble three wide, make it four wide down the back stretch. Mark Martin down on the inside, the 60 car. Right along with Jeff Purvis a couple laps down. Have we seen Nina check on the inside? On the very bottom, he made a pit stop. He's trying to work his way back to the front. And Kyle, now is when a driver begins to worry a little bit. You're back in all that traffic, and you're on the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah, a little bit, you know. The, the advantage right now is we've had a couple of cautions, and, and it's been bad for a lot of people, but it's good for the cats. We still have to fewer cars on the racetrack. These guys can be a little bit braver. They can be a little bit gutsier. They don't have to worry as much because the guys that are out there now, they're going to be settled down. They're going to be ready to race, and they're going to fall in line. There's Lloyd Allen's car number 78 after a good qualifying run and driving the Don Browner machine for the first time this year. There's the defending series champion, the 74 car of Randy LaJoy, who qualified back in the middle of the pack. They're all around. They're all around. Keep He's now being shown up in the sixth position. We're talking about LaJoy. Chevrolet Monte Carlo now looks sort of like a compact car, a subcompact. He is third in the points, trying to get a few more laps in to get those valuable points. But he has been black flagged by NASCAR. But all he's doing is trying to pick up a couple of laps. Also black flagged the 89 car, and that's really good today to get the to get the lap cars out of the way. At these speeds, you, you need slow cars to be off the racetrack. Looking back from Dick Trickle, Snyder, Chevrolet leading the race. Back on Jimmy Spencer's car. We check in in the fifth with Bill Weber. With Dave Blaney, who has come out of the care unit, you're okay? Oh, yeah, just fine. Uh, can you remember what happened? Can you walk us through it? Oh, I was just, you know, we had motor trouble right from the start. It wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't get up to speed. We worked on it a little bit, and uh, we just... Actually, we wanted to wait till we got lapped uh, before we came in and changed the car or try anything. But uh, I, I, I don't know. I just tried to get out of the way and, and uh, let him go. And uh, somebody got in the back of me and off it went. A wild ride, do you recall it? Oh, yeah. But it's just like a sprint car crash. And you close your eyes through those two, so you don't really see it. <laughs> okay, that's Dave Blaney. His car is badly damaged, but he's able to smile. Finished with the days of the day. Oh, what a wild ride. He took the car, got up on its side, and went against the catch fence roof first. Down on the inside, Sterling Marlin, the one car, battling for the fifth spot. This is Sterling Marlin, Briggs and Stratton on board camera as he tries to close up. Sterling driving a team car to Jeff Purvis. This is the car Purvis drove in Daytona at the season opener and finished second. So it's a good race car owned by James Finch. Oh, it's, it's interesting to hear Blaney talk. You know, it's just like sprint cars. You just close your eyes. It's a little bit different than sprint cars. You know what I mean? When you get up on your side and head into the outside wall at 189 miles an hour, but I think he's going to be a really, really big asset to this, this program and really big asset to his program. He studies this stuff. He gets down in the corner. He watches these cars. He talks to people. He's going to be pretty good. Those are the comments of veteran Winston Cup analyst Kyle Petty will be racing in tomorrow's Die Hard 500. Joe Nemechek, our pole sitter, locked in heavy traffic trying to work his way back to the front as they chase Jimmy Spencer and company after 36 laps are complete. Chevy. Nick Trickle continuing to be the leader. Jimmy Spencer in second. Mike McLaughlin. 
Buckshot Jones, Joe Nemechek, our pole center at that pit stop, working his way back into the top five. Look at that steering wheel bob up and down. The vibration in these cars is incredible. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Well, this is the track where Mark Martin and Matt Kenseth met one year ago. Mark ran this race, and so did Matt. And Mark was so impressed with Matt's talent that he called him and said, I want to see you come over and try and get some more experience under the Roush umbrella. Well, right now, that relationship is working very well on and off the track. Matt is following Mark in this race, trying to get more valuable restrictor plate racing experience. The plan was for Matt to make his Winston Cup debut tomorrow, but he failed to qualify for the Winston Cup race. Well, that indeed is correct, Bill. That is teacher and pupil. You're riding along with the pupil, Matt Kenseth, in the 17 car, and the teacher is the car number 60 of Mark Martin. Dick Trickle, they're ganged up on the outside of him. Buckshot's got some help from Nemechek. The double zero is Roy Buckshot Jones. In a Pontiac, they are side by side at 190 miles an hour. What's so great about this overall shot, when you see that shot right there, those are all the three of the cars on the racetrack right there. All the cars are in one place on the two and a half mile racetrack. You've seen side by side action on the interstate at 55 miles an hour, but how about 190? That's Talladega Super Speedway. These cars are now approaching the slower car of Shane Hall down the backstretch, and we saw the last time they approached the slower car, the car of the 93 car of Dave Blaney. Oh, now they got to squeeze three deep to get in the corners. McLaughlin slides up a little bit, so does Nemechek. That's a 34 and 87 that are side by side. Dick Trickle hugging the bottom of the racetrack. Here comes the double zero Pontiac in the outside line. And you can see, even though Trickle's leading, the 12 cars, Jimmy Spencer is the one that's pushed Trickle to the He's not left Spencer running out the drive. He's driving on the bottom of the racetrack, trying to drag that inside line of, along, not worried about that outside line. It looks like he might have moved up, Kyle, because he, the lead is in jeopardy right now. side-by-side -side action, NASCAR, Bush Grand National Series style. 4,000 foot back straight away. A 64 car on the inside, the orange machine is the veteran Dick Trickle. He is the oldest driver in the field. And right now, it's a youngster, the double zero. Buckshot Jones at just 27 years of age out of Monticello, Georgia. He has taken the lead. One hundred and ninety mile per hour action at Talladega. Forty nine laps are complete. Forty nine of one hundred and thirteen laps are complete in this three hundred mile event. Back with more from Talladega after this from our ABC station. Talladega for Speedway action at one hundred and ninety miles an hour looking from the air courtesy of the fine folks of Pennzoil in our Pennzoil copter camp. Gary Punch along with Kyle Petty, Benny Parsons, Jack Root, and Bill Weber bringing you exciting Bush Series action from NASCAR's fastest super speedway. Our leader is this guy right here looking back from his rear bumper cam. That is Dick Trickle. A lot of action coming your way tonight on ABC. A special bonus half hour of America's Funniest Home Videos. Then at 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central, Demi Moore, Woody Harrelson, and Robert Redford star in Indecent Proposal. All tonight on ABC. That's Jimmy Spencer, the white car that follows their leader, Dick Trickle. There's the top six cars. They, that, they've broken away from that pack once again. Pretty much nose to tail for the first six, then they scramble out side by side. Here's a driver that's had problems with running in the top five. The car number one of Sterling Marlin on pit road. And Sterling limps to a stop. They believe he broke a shock. He was running in the big pack at the front of the field. Now the engine has been shut off on his Monte Carlo. So Sterling Marlin sits in the car. They look underneath the hood. Tony Glover's underneath. And uh, obviously, no panic sign. The gloves are coming off. The steering wheel coming off. Day over for Sterling Marlin. Perhaps a broken shock. They thought a lot of guys would probably break shock mounts in these cars today because the ride is so rough. This might be the first one of those we've seen. Jimmy Spencer appears to be headed to pit road. 
Lap 54, you got to wonder. A lot of guys concerned about fuel mileage. What's the problem, Jack? Is this routine? Well, Jerry, it has to be considered routine, but the problem was they wanted to go longer than this. But, you know, when you start to run the numbers down, you start to panic. He came in dead stick. You can hear it run out of gas just as he came into the box. They have yet to be able to successfully refire it. As we listen, one can is in. It's still silent here for Jimmy Spencer. They fire it one more time. It still has not refired. This is a costly stop for Jimmy Spencer and the Zippo team. Spencer flanks the gas pedal. He's off and away. But it was long and costly. Everyone wanted to go to halfway. We are still one lap away from halfway as the leaders come down to take lap number 56. 57 laps will be halfway in this 300-mile event. Jimmy Spencer rolled the dice. He came up one lap short. He tries to get back to speed, but he will go another lap down as Dick Trickle and the leaders blow by him in turns one and two. And the cars that you see, Dick Trickle, Mike McLaughlin, them not stop. Phil Parker, Randall Joy, all these cars have made pit stops. Well, this strategy will pay out if it does pay out, is if they go the rest of the race green, and if Spencer can make it. A lot of ifs right in there, because these guys, the, the Phil Parsons, the, the 10 car, the 34 car, the 74, they're going to have to pit one more time no matter what. He'll make up his lap at that point in time because he is in the lead draft, and he'll be back in front of it. But if he has to pit again, then so will. Mark Mark trying to work his way to the front. That's Mark in the black and gold car, the 61 Dixie car. Halfway that time by, they signaled the cross flags, indicating we are halfway home. 150 miles are complete, 150 to go. An exciting Talladega Super Speedway. 33 car, Tim Fiedel on the bottom of the racetrack. He's currently running in about 6, 7 spot. Maybe checks going by, that's Blaze Alexander in the 20 car. He's trying to get by as well on the outside. If you just joined us and are wondering where our current point leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr., is, he was one of 13 cars that were out of action prior to lap 23. A six-car accident on lap six, a seven-car accident on lap 22. Took out 13 cars, including four of the top ten in points. Exciting Bush Series action from Talladega Super Speedway resumes after this to Talladega Super Speedway. The big question is now, we are just past the halfway point. When will those lead cars that have not pitted roll the dice to come on the pit road? The question yesterday in the final practice, Benny Parsons, was how far could they go? Well, that's right. They've been now 58 laps and counting. 59 laps. Obviously, they want, they'd love to catch a caution flag. Hope that the caution flag waves and they go in the pits. And now Phil Parsons, Randall Joy gets by on the inside. The 63 car of Tracy Leslie, but now Buckshot's caught up, and so Phil has some drafting help on the outside. The outside line may be the place to be, though, because the 64 and the 34 have to pit at some point in time here pretty quick, because there's the two, two of the cars that haven't quit. When they check up... Oh, the Joy gets touched from behind. Tony Stewart, big crash up in the corner. This car slide, spin, and slam up in turn four. Hey, Randy. Fire erupts from beneath one car. They race back to the lead. Phil Parsons, the 10 car. McLaughlin, the 34. NASCAR will have to make the call there. There's the Randall LaJoy, two-time Bush Grand National Champion. He's trying to get back to the fence, but you see the car does not want to roll. Hey, Randy. How you doing, buddy? Oh, horrendous crash in turn four. Hey, boy, what's going on? He hit Randy, 93 or 63 hit Randy. They're trying to raise him on the radio. You see the front end damage of the car number 74. Here's a replay of what happened. There's a 63 they were talking about right there. He just touches LaJoy, just touches him in the corner. LaJoy, and then there's no place for the other cars to go. The 17, Kenseth, Kenseth is involved. I mean, there's 12 cars involved, 10 cars. There, there's no place for anybody to go. You can see at one time the 44 car of Stewart and the 70, 17 of Kenza has the entire track blocked from the wall all the way down. Just a touch, just the least touch from Tracy Lesser, the 63 car of LaJoy. 
And look at the cars piling in with no place to go. Lays Alexander involved. The 33 of Tim Fidua is involved. 44 of Tony Stewart. Now riding along on the onboard camera of Jess Purvis. And Purvis is waving and said, come on, let's go. I don't think so, Jeff. If you knew I was up there, you wouldn't want to go too hard. He cannot see anything. And guess what? So far, he hasn't anything. Is he going to get through this? He got through without hitting anything. Now for Matt Kenseth in car camera. He's going to hit something. Just listen. Copter cam. Here's what they had to try to drive through without being able to see a thing. We're talking about traffic behind this. LaJoy gets tagged. Phil Parsons gets by on the outside. Buckshot gets by on the outside. And 87 gets by. And then the hole closes. And you see all that smoke? And there's no place to go. Once again, lap number 60. These cars involved. Nemechek's rear bumper cam. That's what's left of the, the defending and two-time series champion Chevrolet Randy LaJoy as we check in the pitch with Bill Weber. It's a bad break for a lot of guys, but a good break for these guys, including Mike McLaughlin, who was just about to pit under green. He was going to take two tires, but now under caution, look for them to take four and enough fuel to be able to get them to the finish. McLaughlin having a good run after a strong qualifying effort. Right side going on, fuel going in. We go to Jackaroo. Bill, how close was it for Dick Trickle? As he came the last 50 yards on a pit road, the car began to sputter. When they told him the pits was open, he said, it had better be. Mike McLaughlin motors by Dick Trickle as they make the four-tire change, and all 22 gallons of gas go in, but not before Buckshot Jones blows by Dick Trickle. Boy, a break for the guys up front in more ways than one. Not only did they miss this horrendous collision in turn out at the appropriate time. As you heard Jack Arute say, the 64 car could not have made it another lap. Here at the Duraloom Chevrolet, Phil Parsons at 40 years of age, he is the leader of the Touchstone Energy 300 from Talladega Super Speedway. Back to Talladega, we encourage you to fire up 23 race cars and three separate caution flags, the latest coming out on lap 60, which involved 10 cars. This is a shot from the Penzo copter cam of the, of the accident as it happens. You see the 63 get into the 74, and there's just a deluge of cars. In your right rear, uh, right corner of your TV screen, you see this yellow car. That's Matt Hutter. You see him come into it. Young driver, inexperienced. What's he thinking at this point in time? What's going through his mind? The racetrack's blocked. All of a sudden, it opens up. He goes through it. One of the few cars to come from behind the accident to get all the way through it. A great job. Well, an outstanding job. We mentioned we lost six cars at lap six in a caution, seven cars on lap 23, and ten cars involved there on lap Ray, number if I six. call up there, somebody's trying to... Mike McLaughlin's car number 34 will lead him back to the green flag. And after the series of pit stops, Matt Hunter now Kyle is running in third spot. Be that caution out for seven laps. Now, fuel should not be a problem. The pit stops that occurred just a moment ago. They should be able to make it the rest of the way all the way to lap 113 to conclude the 300 miler here today. We see Tracy Leslie, Phil Parsons, and Joe Nemechek trying to work their way back to the front. Two cars, Larry Pearson driving the car this time. 
One of the drivers involved in an incident a moment ago was having a great run. Now he is back in the garage area with our Bill Weber. And Tony Stewart, very disappointed you had an excellent car. Yeah, boy, the, the Shell Pontiac crew really gave me a great car today. You know, this thing, uh, we probably wore out a set of brake pads in 60 laps just because the car was pulling up so good in the draft that we had to use a lot of brakes to, to keep from having to get out on the throttle. So, uh, and it's a shame we had a great car today and uh, just got one of those racing accidents. Okay, that's Tony Stewart. He's another victim of a wild Racing League champion will be headed to Indianapolis Motor Speedway to try to sit on the pole, which you'll be able to see on ABC coming up in the month of May. Forty-five laps to go in this 300 miler. Speeds at 190 miles an hour. There is Phil Parsons' car number 10. Right in front of Joe Nemechek. As you ride along with Nemechek on the onboard. Bell South Mobility in-car camera. And that white car that's in second spot right now, Jimmy Spencer, let's not forget about it. Spencer, remember, made that unscheduled start with that green flag pit stop, and it's now one lap down. If the caution flag were to come out right now, trust me, Spencer would be doing everything he can to pass Mike McLaughlin, get back in the lead lap. There's a look at the car number 64 of Dick Trickle. We told you there were 10 cars involved in the incident on lap 60, included among those defending series champion Randy LaJoy, who's standing by with Bill Weber. Out of the race, the tough season for you continues. What happened here? Well, it looked like finish the only minor car. was finding a little lap. Uh, Trickle in the 34 car needed to pit, which put us up there to probably come around to start finish line first, but I guess the 63 car got a little impatient. Well, I got in the back of my left rear and just turned me around. And after that, you just grab the steering wheel and hopefully nobody T-bones you and keep it on all four. It's too bad. Finish the Chevrolet Monte Carlo is running good. We've had a tough year. And, uh, well, it's done for today, it looks like. We'll be back in a couple weeks. Okay, and I'll also be back here tomorrow in the 50 Winston Cup Budweiser Chevy. LaJoy subbing for Ricky Craven, who is out recovering from post-concussive syndrome. Craven driving for Rick Hendrick in the Budweiser Chevy. Buckshot trying to work his way to the front. With some help from Trickle. Now he tried on the inside. That didn't work. He's not going to the outside. That's a double zero. Double zero Buckshot Jones. Spencer in the 12, the Zippo car. There comes Nemechek. Buckshot made a series of moves from, from the middle of one and two all the way to, to turn three to get to the outside of Spencer. Pretty, pretty impressive driving. That double zero was the fastest Pontiac in qualifying. He qualified third overall. His name is Roy Jones. As you heard Jack Aru take the top of our show, his grandfather nicknamed him Buckshot when he hit his head on the table at the age of three and didn't cry. So that young man is tough as Buckshot. And ever since that time, the nickname has stuck. And right now, he's sticking a Pontiac at the front of the field. But Spencer trying to get that lap back. Got those cars racing. Now he's going to try to get to the front with help from Dick Trickle. Meanwhile, McLaughlin leading the last lap. He's caught in the middle trying to stay in the top five. Buckshot Jones, a leader. Joe Nemechek, who was the pole center in second spot. Jimmy Spencer in that white and red numeral car number 12 on the inside. Digging for all he's worth. Trying to get his lap back. He is one lap down. There are 14 cars on the lead lap with 41 laps to go. The orange car behind the 12, the 64 machine, that is Dick Trickle. He is on the lead lap and currently running in fourth position. 41 laps remain at Talladega Super Speedway. In the Touchstone Energy 300, Buckshot Jones is our leader. Talladega Super Speedway, the Touchstone Energy 300. The double zero showing the lead in trouble. Tracy Lester's in the crash. Dick Trickle's in the crash. That's Jeff Crow, the yellow car on the inside. Heavy damage to his car. Dick Trickle's car involved. Right along from his end car camera, see if we can see what happened.
I don't know that Trickle hit anything hard. I, and I'm not sure why it happened. It looked like the car in front of Trickle just takes off instantly, which is a 63 car. Yeah, Tracy Leslie Tracy all Leslie. of a sudden just takes off. I don't know if there was contact or the rear tire went flat on the 63 or exactly what happened. Yeah, I, the Trickle's car, it didn't look like there was any contact with Trickle's car with the 63. It just instantly just jumped out from under Tracy. Let's check into the Dick Trickle pitch with Jack Aroot. Well, Dick Trickle radioed into his crew that that's precisely what happened. The Tracy Leslie just plain lost it, and Trickle couldn't get on the binders quick enough. But Trickle's damage is mainly on the front end of the car, down just beyond the front air dam. So the crew's going to go to work with that old 200-mile-an-hour duct tape to try and at least make an aero package on the nose that will allow Dick Trickle to continue on this race. But what was interesting is just a couple of seconds before Dick Trickle was collected in that accident, he radioed in and thought he had a shock that broke. So now they begin to wonder, is there a shock problem or not, guys? Well, Jimmy Spencer has exited his car as they begin to, to work on the Zippo Chevrolet. We'll show you. This is the incident again. We're going to list the cars that were involved. Tracy Leslie's car number 63. That's the car that's spinning. You see Trickle 64 spinning around. The car number two of Larry Pearson. The 56 car of Krogh. You see heavy damage on the front and rear. That car was running in eighth spot. Joe Bessie's car number eight is involved. Jimmy Spencer's white car number 12. And Mike Cope's Slim Jim machine. Those are the cars involved on caution number five coming out on lap number 78. Heavy damage as Mike Cope has made it back to the garage area. 80 of 113 laps are complete. For Speedway, coming up tomorrow at 5 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ABC Sports, Toyota presents the AMA Supercross Motorcycle Championship. Catch the wild racing excitement as the hottest Supercross riders tear up the track at Texas Stadium. Don't miss it tomorrow on ABC Sports. Our AutoZone race recap shows you that Buckshot Jones currently is our leader, has led 22 of 92 laps. There have been six lead changes, six cautions for a total of 35 laps, just two shy of the Bush Series record. The average speed way down at 114 miles per hour and change. Our lap leaders, Dick Trickle, Buckshot Jones, Joe Nemechek, Mike McLaughlin, and Phil Parsons. Off the track, which means they're still working on the car, is Kevin Swans. Now, out of race, folks, this is a very, very long list. And as you look at, for your favorite drivers, I'll tell you that 30 of the 43 cars that started today have been involved in one accident or another. 30 out of 43, which means there are just 11 cars left, or make that 10 cars left on the lead lap. A piece of debris on the apron that cleaned up while we were in break. All right, let's be ready. Just about to go back to green. Buckshot Jones and leader on the outside, the dark car. Green flag, green flag. Those are the voices of the spotters that say, stop and stay high on the racetrack and try to watch for trouble and warn their drivers of problems. That works too well. Though. 18 laps remain here at Talladega Super Speedway. The 57 car in the middle of your screen, Jason Keller, the Justin Boot Chevrolet. He is a lap down trying to get back on the lead lap, but he is losing ground as the double zero car, Buckshot Jones, is the leader. Game 17, a check in second. And the 34 car of Mike McLaughlin is in third spot. Folks, if you watch this race earlier on, there's a lot more cars went by that shot early in the race, but as we showed you just a moment ago, a lot of attrition today here at Talladega. And the latest incident coming out on lap 78, seven cars involved, including Jimmy Spencer, who was a threat to win this thing. He's standing by in the pits. Well, Jimmy Spencer, you were exciting once again, but not to victory lane. What happened out there? Oh. Well, the 63 car lost it, and, uh, you know, I thought I had it missed. He caught me in the left front fender there, whatever, door. It was exciting. I didn't like it at all. It hit the wall really hard. You know, the Zippo all brought up our ship. It was running really good, and uh, we just messed up on the, the gas mileage deal. Uh, I was playing with the throttle too much, trying to save uh, the motor, and it really hurt me, but that's part of this business. Jimmy, why do you think we're seeing so many crashes today? 
These guys got really erratic on their rebound on their shocks. I didn't. That's why we didn't lead the race. They, they don't understand what they're doing. The 63 and, the, and just let's go down the list of guys. You know, I don't want to pick on 63, but I'm just saying a bunch of them. Okay, Jackie. And they don't know what they're doing. And I mean, it's just it's dangerous, and that's what's happening out there. A lot of frustration from Mr. Excitement, Jimmy Spencer. As I told you, a lot of cars heavily damaged. A lot of them completely wiped out today here at Talladega. And you're good there, Pose, at a check. Trying down, down to the inside, trying to take the lead from Buckshot Jones. Be the caution when you get here. Run hard. Spotter telling the lead drivers the caution is waving. Keep Run going, hard. Joe. Just keep the hammer down, boy. Keep the hammer down. Keep the hammer down. That is Buckshot Jones, Spotter. And look hey, like... Let's ease up. Let's ease up. Let's ease up. Looks like Buckshot may have gotten Nemechek at the stripe to be the leader as the caution came out again. That is the seventh time today the caution flag has been waved at Talladega. Here's, we come down to the line. Let's see how close this is. Nemechek on the inside, Buckshot on the outside, and it's Buckshot by a fender. By a fender, Roy Buckshot Jones leads at Talladega as laps are winding down. Back with more in just a moment. Has frequent heartburn been a... Back at Talladega Super Speedway, working the seventh caution flag of the day. You can stay up to speed with complete racing coverage, including the latest news, notes, and results, all on ABC Sports Online on American Online. The keyword, ABC Sports. And this car, number 74, has been black flagged because of the heavy damage. He was so slow on the racetrack. I won't say he was slow, but if a bug hit his windshield, it'd probably die of old age. No joy for Randy LaJoy today or this year. Take a look at the last couple of years. Last year, he had led 496 laps and had two wins to this date in the season. This year, he has not led a single lap and has not won a race and has just been black flagged to head back to the garage area. A tough year for the two-time and defending Bush Grand National Series champion. The cars are lined up two by two to go back to green flag racing. You see, there's not many of them, folks. And a lot of the cars that out there do have damage, but meanwhile, we have about five or six cars that can win this thing that don't have any damage, except for them to see who's going to shake out and be the one this afternoon. Including our leader, 27 year old Roy Buckshot Jones. Back. And the double zero. Buckshot Jones. Jack Phil Dick Trickle. After the spin out, he's back to fifth spot. Now's when some of the deal making starts to happen on pit road among the crew chiefs. When you need a dancing partner, you see him go three wide. You gotta have someone to help you in the draft. And Kyle, are you aware as a driver that these guys are talking in the pits, or are you just totally focusing on what's happening out there trying to signal someone to go with you? Let me tell you, every spotter is talking to the other spotter, every crew chief's talking to the other crew chief, and the drivers have already taken their brains out right now. They're not listening to anything that anybody's saying. They're trying to get to the front of the line, no matter who hurts, who hurts them, they're trying to get to win the race. Those are the comments of Kyle Petty with 13 laps to go. Another driver who's had to go back to the garage area is Tracy Leslie, who was in a couple incidents today. Dodged one, but was involved in two others. He's now standing by in the garage area with our Bill Weber. Bill? Tracy, a difficult day for you. First, let's talk about the incident between you and Randy LaJoy. Well, you know, the lap before that, or two laps before that, the 12 cars kind of just come off the corner and got on the brakes. And so, you know, we knew the 64 and the 34 had to pick yet. And, you know, we went off into three. And I seen the 34 flag in his hand a little bit, so I waved my hand, and I guess whoever was behind me, the 44, tapped me, and I got into Randy. I hate it for him, but, you know, we was getting lights all Monte Carlo. We stayed up front most of the day. We'd get back to 15, 16, come back to the front. Uh, I don't know if we was as good as a double zero with 87, but, you know, we had that last pit stop there, and I thought we were set. We're going to go to the end, and... Um, Maybe finish in the top five, maybe in the top three. Uh, just riding along there, we had a pretty strong car. And, and I guess the car got a little loose there right after that.
that last caution. I thought maybe the guys loosened it up and figured we'd be a little freer, be a little faster, and didn't tell me. But you know, they said no, everything was the same. It kept getting looser, and I figured we had a tire going down, and it blew going off into three, and all hell broke loose after that. I feel sorry for everybody else. Hope nobody got hurt and come back again this week. Okay, he's obviously disappointed with his day and disappointed some other people got caught up in his problems as well. Well, while Bill was talking to Tracy Leslie, some deal-making indeed unfolded as the 10 and the 87 car of Parsons and Nemechek hooked up in a draft and went right by Buckley. There's the top five cars, the last car in line. The red and white car of Jason Keller is a lap down. He's running in 11 spot. There's the discussions ongoing. Gene Need, the crew chief for Bill Parsons, talking to the representative from the Bell South Mobility team of Joe Nemechek. That's the first and second place cars. Now, when you make a deal like that, pal, how long do you remain friends? Um, once you key the mic and they tell you what the deal is, then it's over with. I'm telling you. You know, there's a lot of people that are doing a lot of talking. Bill Parsons doesn't want to run second to Joe Nemechek, no matter how much deal making there is going on right there. Bill Parsons wants to win the race. Same for Mike McLaughlin, same for, for Dick Trickle. These guys are trying to get to the front, so they're saying, okay, get out of here. And then it's every man for himself. And that's basically, you know, when you talk about dancing and you talk about deal making and you talk about stuff like that, uh, you know, there's, there's, it's all out the window when it comes down to five or six laps to go. Katie, calm down. Calm down, Katie. Lachlan's wife, Katie. Her girlfriend. I'm not sure they're married yet. It's, it's her fiance. They are. We're a little premature. She will be his wife. Benny just, Benny just announced it. Just proposed for Mike. I'm sure he'll appreciate that. <laughs> well, he proposed earlier because I saw the rock on her hand. But right now, he's trying to get a good top two, maybe even a win to pay for that diamond ring. Talking about the car number 34 of Mike McLaughlin back in third spot. You're riding along with the bumper cam of Joe Nemechek, the leader. Uh-oh, here comes McLaughlin. Here comes Phil, the three of friends. McLaughlin on the inside, the 34 car, the Goulds Pumps machine. He will have second spot from Parson with nine laps to go. is the double zero of Roy Buckshot Jones. There he is, right behind Phil Parsons. Can they hook up and draft together? The 99 car is also there. Glenn Allen from 40th starting position, the 1996 Rookie of the Year in the Luxair machine. He is back there running in sixth spot. Now Phil goes by Dick Trickle on the outside. Trickle, and when he spun up earlier, does have some damage to the nose of the car. I'm sure that's hurting him somewhat as Phil and Buckshot and Glenn Allen trying to hook up and go by on the outside. Trickle, Trickle with that front end damage needs someone in front of him to push the air. And when he gets hung on the, on the inside like that or anywhere on the racetrack, whether it's a high side, not being as, as aerodynamic, it's just going to stop him like a, like a brick wall and he goes to the back of the pack. 34-year-old Joe Nemechek, the 1992 Bush Grand National Series national champion, trying to get his second win here in 1998 as he leads it with less than 10 laps to go. There is Martha Nemechek right there, the tears, the emotion. Mike McLaughlin in second spot. She's looking back at McLaughlin, and you're right, they're not married. I knew something happened. It was the engagement that happened. That's what happened between Mike and Katie back in the winter. Looks like Katie's coming out. Oh, they're going by again. The nerves of having to sit and watch the loved ones in a race car at 190 miles an hour. With six laps to go at the world's fastest stock car facility. And Bill, Bill Parsons. Parsons. Gets a run on the outside of McLaughlin. McLaughlin took a look on the inside, left the outside open. Phil and Buckshot dive to the outside. McLaughlin's going to try to fill that hole as you come off the corner. No. Bill Parsons trying to do it with a little bit of help from Buckshot on the outside, and they will hang McLaughlin out on the inside. 
around five or six laps ago, that's almost a payback. When Field tried to go to the inside, couldn't get down, they wouldn't let him out. They hung him to the outside, they went by on the inside. Field does the same thing in return here. And that's just the way Talladega racing is. And here we got Buckshot and the 34 McLaughlin side by side, and Glenn Allen back there as well. As long as they run side by side, they're really not making any progress towards catching the cars. Now, Glenn Allen pushes McLaughlin by Buckshot Jones. There will be four laps to go this time by on the 2.66 mile super speedway in Talladega, Alabama. 190 mile per hour laps. Joe Nemechek, the pole center for the Chevrolet. Then Phil Parsons in second spot. The 34 car of McLaughlin is third. There is Andrea Nemechek, Joe's wife. She's the, one of the scorers in the pits, watching nervously. This battle, 99, the double zero, Benny, side by side, four position. That's the four spot. We'll see Dick Trickle back to the 64. And Phil Parsons and McLaughlin has caught Nemechek. Three and a half laps to go. Now Phil Parsons has some help from McLaughlin and a Chevrolet. Who will help who? in these final three laps. Parsons and McLaughlin are regulars in the Bush Series. Nemechek, the former series champion, drives full-time in NASCAR Winston Cup. They will race tomorrow for 500 miles at Talladega. Still side by side, in that fifth spot. And running side by side, having to push that huge wall of wind without drafting, that's cost them a lot of time, Kyle. Yeah, with three laps to go, you know, they, with each passing foot on the racetrack, they're getting farther and farther behind and going to have an incredibly hard time getting caught up. You know, these guys are pretty much down to a three-car race with, with Phil and with Joe and with Mike, and these guys are basically racing for fourth and fifth right now. Still side by side, the former rookie of the year, Glenn Allen. They will get the two to go this time by. This is the 50th anniversary of NASCAR. Some of the wildest finishes in NASCAR history have come right here at Talladega Super Speedway. There's Dick Trickle driving down to the inside as Glenn Allen is taken away from Buckshot Jones. Goes by, or tries to go by Buckshot Jones. Now Buckshot side by side with Dick Trickle. Trickle with that front end damage can't run there. He has to pull back and line behind him. But with two to go, uh, basically really, on three and a half, and a half to go, they, they'd have to be incredibly fast to run this front pack. But then Phil's really not made much progress uh, on, on Joe Nemechek here, even with Mike pushing him. But, you know, whatever happens to him. Whatever happens to Mike here is pretty much going to be dictated to Joe. Spit on, buddy. Just a little bit. Get down. Stop the battle. Phil looking oh, at the Nothing there. White flag waved a moment ago by Carl Simmons. Now it's you and a spotter. And a spotter to guide you less than two miles from the check. No mind, you got two car lengths. Oh, that calls. Entering turn three, 34-year-old Joe Nemechek on the bottom of the racetrack. Here comes Phil Parson, three car lengths. They get two car lengths. They head to the trial with McLaughlin trying to push Parson. Hold on, Joe. Just shot on, buddy. Get shot on. Start finish line. Get your foot down. Nemechek will take the victory. Parsons in second. McLaughlin is third. Buckshot is on fourth. And they're still racing for positions as they come off the corner. There we see the 36, Matt Hunter, and the 38, Hunter will finish back in ninth spot. Elton Sawyer in 10th. Let's go down to Bill Weber in the Nemechek pit. Well, Kerchie, Brian, Patty is down making deals in the 10 car pit. Martha Nemechek, a big win for you here at Talladega. Well, thank you. Um, I just thank God for having a safe race. And um, I know Joe can drive a car if the car is right. I thought you were driving it from in here. I thought he was just riding along. I always 
try to drive it, I guess. Well, now you get to go to Victory Lane. Congratulations. Thank you so much. That's a very happy and a very proud mother. And it's not where you start at Talladega, it's where you finished. And for Joe Nemechek, the answer to both those questions was first. Front row Joe starts today from the pole and finishes as number one in the Touchstone Energy 300. We'll come back and talk to the winner in just a moment. Joe, welcome to Talladega Victory Lane. Three consecutive starts in the front row. You finally got matching bookends for your win at Daytona. I'll tell you what, this is something special. Uh, you know, we sat on the pole here three years in a row. Should have won it a couple years ago. Last year got wrecked. Uh, just this team did an awesome job. I just, I can't say enough. Uh, I know I'm going to need a back massage tonight. It is rough as right. I think we broke a rear shock there with about 30 laps to go. And I didn't know if I was going to get back by Buckshot or not. And, uh... I'm just, I'm just happy everything worked out. There at the end, I thought Phil was going to have a run on me, but uh, hey, our Bell South Mobility Chevrolet was awesome. You know, talking about that, you kind of had to have your strategy go right out the window when you ran over some debris and had to pit early, make it a two-stop race. But then you had to find some dancing partners, and your, your crew chief managed to find one for you. Oh, Brian Patty and all these guys on this team did awesome. Uh, my spotter, Randy Howe. He was up there trying to make deals with guys to go with me. But, you know, you get out here racing, and, and once you get get going, I mean, it, there's you have no friends. You try and not hang anybody out. But uh, it was just a good run. You know, Tony Stewart ran good with us. Uh, I just hate to see all the accidents, and I hope everybody's all right. Well, we want to let your mom get in here because Martha's been part of your racing career, and there's a victory lane kiss that they've waited for a long time, Jerry. Well, indeed, no, Joe Nemechek takes the win. Phil Parsons coming from 21st to finish second. He almost got there. Why don't we ask Phil himself? Here is Bill Weber standing by with him. Bill? Well, Jerry, I know Phil Parsons is going to be smiling about this finish. That turned out to be a pretty good day for you. It wasn't bad. I tell you, the good Lord was looking out for us, Bill. We, uh, it seems like there was one wreck that was behind us, the first one, I think, and everything else we had to drive through. My spotters did a great job. My whole Duraloop crew did a super job. They uh, made some great calls, and all week, really, the chassis was just perfect. Wagner Automotive did a super job with the engine. I want to thank them. Uh, they're doing a terrific job working real hard. Carl Wagner and all his guys. And Chevrolet Monte Carlo and Goodyear and Northeastern Supply, Honeywell. And Joe oh. Nemechek probably wants to thank you. Well, he should. He should. He said, go with me, and I, and I won't hang out. And, uh, and I did. And, uh, and then he hung me out there, there before the last <laughs> caution. And then at the end, he didn't hang me out. But Mikey was trying to help me do something. You know, his spotter came over and said, hey, we'll, help. we'll go with you. But I, my foot never left the floor. And uh, I just, I could get to him, but I couldn't get a run on him, so we're going to have to take second, I guess. Okay, well, second at Talladega is pretty impressive. Good finish for Phil Parsons. And speaking of the finish, let's take a look at it. The arrow will show you the guys who led a lap. The double arrow is the guy who led the most lap. As 10 cars finish on the lead lap unofficially here after 300 miles. Jason Keller will be the first car one lap down. Shane Hall finishes back in the 12th spot. And folks, look at the cars who are out of this race today. 30 of the 43 starters were involved in some incident or another on the racetrack. That's how exciting it gets at Talladega Super Speedway. The point standings after this event. Dale Earnhardt Jr. came in here with a slim 31-point lead. Well, now Matt Kenseth is the point leader. McLaughlin, Earnhardt Jr. back to third spot. Sadler, Jones, Hermie Sadler, LaJoy, last year's champion. Trickle, Keller, and Mike Dillon in the top ten. Lots of racing action yet to come your way this weekend. Talladega coverage, noon Eastern time on ESPN2, RPM today. Then NASCAR today at 12.30 Eastern time tomorrow. And then our live flag-to-flag -flag coverage on ABC Sports of the 29th running of the Die Hard 500. Bobby Labonte on a Pontiac on the pole, flanked by seven-time Talladega winner Dale Earnhardt as they will lead him down to the 43-car field for the green flag. I don't think I've ever seen as much attrition as we saw here at Talladega today. Just one big crash after another, three huge crashes. I certainly hope we don't see that tomorrow. For Kyle Petty, Benny Parsons, Bill Weber, Jack Aroot, I'm Jerry Punch. Once again, congratulating 34-year-old Joe Nemechek on his second win at 1998. What a barn burner here at Talladega. As the Victory Lane celebration continues, let's go back to our Wide Roller Sports Studio in New York. Here is host, Robin Roberts. And Robin, it just doesn't get much better than this.